When in need of a piece so ruthless and chaotic, look no further than the California experimental band Shushu to deliver something so sonically blistering, yet fearless with the unhinged lyricism from frontman Jamie Stewart. I want you and I to take a look at their 11th studio album, Girl with Basket of Fruit. On the surface level, one may find the noises and sounds bleeding out of this nine track piece of abstract musical poetry to be nothing but a loud disturbance. A blend of all things noise and barking percussion, subdued with rare pockets of hollowed piano synths and these vocal performances as if you're watching a man break down in a dark, musty open mic night. But leave it up to Shushu to show no resistance in talking about all subjects from strong issues and tragic injustices to pure lyrical insanity underneath the radioactive debris that is Girl with Basket of Fruit. And I know that's a lot to start this video off with, but there is a lot to talk about <laughs> with this album. Before we begin today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to new patrons, The Groove That Speaks, Ronan Farrow, and everyone else who supports me over at the Club Chennington Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, all while getting access to some really cool exclusive content and benefits, like access to our patron-only Discord server, Club Chennington, head on over to my Patreon page and check it all out. I will leave a link in the description of this video down below. So a quick note about myself personally, I've never really listened to much of Shushu before. The only project I think I've sat through in its entirety up until the making of this video, of course, is Shushu Plays the Music of Twin Peaks, a reimagining of Angelo Badalamenti's emotional and one-of-a-kind score to one of my favorite shows of all time, Twin Peaks. I've always known of the band and how dynamic their presence has been for so many listeners. I've heard of them in passing, and I've always been recommended to check them out for the channel due to their catalog of music that just varies between pop tendencies to straight up harsher and more vicious cuts. And because of that, Shushu always seemed like this sort of yin and yang musical folklore to me, if that makes any sense at all. Beginning in 2002 by singer, songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist Jamie Stewart, Shushu had released 10 studio albums before Girl with Basket of Fruit. The name Shushu comes from the film Shushu the Sent Down Girl, a moving and crushingly intense 1998 Chinese drama that takes a look at the tragic journey of a young girl trying to return home after being manipulated and violated countless times throughout her story. The film was banned in China, and its symbolic themes and shining light on policies at the time relate heavily with the symbolic ambitions Jamie has put forward with many of the releases in the Shushu discography. Just like the film, Jamie does not shy away from using his platform to shed light on harsher issues, and the jarring and bombastic abstract musical approach Shushu brings to the table is often hard to look away from. It just works. Before we get into what may be one of the most horrifying songs I've ever heard, let us take a look at the overall sound design of Girl with Basket of Fruit. Released on February 8th, 2019, this configuration of Shushu saw Jamie Stewart working with co-producers Angela Sio and Greg Saunier, all partnered up with a variety of instrumentally diverse guest appearances. It seems to me that many Shushu releases, and I'll further understand this I'm sure once I dive deeper into their work, find that perfect boundary between radio-friendly or art pop and jagged, more industrial sound design that would be off-putting, to say the least for many. The direction for Girl with Basket of Fruit tends to lean a bit more towards the abrasive side of the scale. Some tracks will retain some sort of groove or catchy moment, but it's hard to sink your teeth into any of the rhythms, as Jamie's vocal delivery doesn't obey much to the command of the instrumentals per se, taking charge as the leader of the bunch. And this also correlates into the understanding of Jamie's lyricism here as well, where many of the tracks cross over into just pure abstract absurdity and wacky wordplay, Besides the track Mary Turner, Mary Turner, which is very upfront in what it's about, we will get to that shortly. The out of left field lyrics are definitely a big thing to observe within Girl with a Basket of Fruit, and all things considered, it seems pretty obvious that the band knew this would be the case as well. There is a wonderful breakdown on the Talk House Media outlet, a guide to Shoe Shoe's Girl with a Basket of Fruit that actually features Jamie giving a track by track tour of the album. The article also features Angela choosing her favorite and least favorite lyrics from each song. And I really love an article that allows the artists themselves to kind of take the wheel in the discussion of set music. And it's really fascinating to see Jamie's perspective on how people can absorb the work of Shushu lyrically. 
He starts off the discussion with, Normally, I try to avoid making public any overt explanations as to what any of our records or songs are about lyrically. Whenever asked, and although it is quite fair to pose a band this question, I will usually say that it is not my business to define these things for the listener. One's own thoughts don't need any of my inane disruptions. Obviously, I have my own ideas about the lyrics, but the hope is that anyone who might check them out has their own experience, good or bad, expanded or null. Girl with Basket of Fruit kicks off with a track of the same name, and as an introductory track embodies many of the practices you'll see scattered throughout the rest of the album. Stewart's spoken word howls over a variety of drums in a sort of ritualistic manner. In regards to the design of the mix, this track and the album as a whole sounds exquisitely ferocious, and you can thank the variety of layers, instrumentals, and recordings that vary in quality and clarity for that clashing together to create an untamed amalgamation of sound. It's rough and it's imperfect and there's a sense of urgency and importance in Jamie's vocal presence on top of everything. There are times where you can envision him pointing a finger in your face as you're being held down by the frenzy of Shushu's instrumental henchmen. Also, he can get his voice out there regardless of how uncomfortable you feel. And then there are tracks like The Wrong Thing, where you picture him crawled up into a ball crying in this corner as you battle with your fight or flight instincts on whether or not you want to actually approach him. Say hello to blistering tracks like Scissors, a mangled concoction of percussion, shrieks, and a person whispering in your ear, always seemingly right behind you. And then there's tracks like Ice Cream Truck. They feature these harsh and jagged washes of noise, distortion, and howling horns, all providing the foundation for powerful vocals to reign supreme once again. And then, this is contrasted by longer, stretched out moments, going back to that track, The Wrong Thing, where you always still feel a bit uptight and you always feel like a jump scare is right around the corner. I love when the album jumps from its quieter moments to its louder moments, and this can happen multiple times throughout individual songs themselves, and the activation of these drops and sudden rises make them feel that much more powerful from one another. One of the more literal, distinguishable tracks on the album, the one I was making note of earlier, goes to the seventh track on here, Mary Turner, Mary Turner, a track about a woman who was lynched for protesting the lynching death of her husband Hazel in May of 1918. Mary was eight months pregnant at the time, and Jamie doesn't hold anything back when telling this horrific story exactly how it unfolded only just a century ago. What makes the track so disturbing is that it may seem to have the same wicked, or horrific imagery and lyricism as all of the other tracks it sits next to on the album. However, this track is a literal account of what happened at this moment in time. It's simply Jamie telling the events of this atrocity. The album finishes off in a weird way on this emotional, liquid-filled keys and distant vocal flooding just piece of just, I don't know, all your senses leave at once and you just feel weirdly relaxed. It's called Normal Love and it embodies a quaint, emptiness that you just reflect on the debris of the previous eight tracks. It's a perfect closing for an album like this and uh, just kind of seals away everything we went through. Girl with Basket of Fruit can manage to have a sort of groovy or dancey feel at times, although it's rare and I find it even hard to label these moments as groovy or dancey. These uncommon moments give you some necessary space from the blistering beats you aren't sure you can handle any longer. The track Pumpkin Attack on Mommy and Daddy is a good example of this, but even that track is just like this explosion of craziness. So it's really weird how the whole album works out. It definitely piqued my curiosity into staying for the whole ride and to now see what else the band has to offer. It seems that there are more cohesive releases maybe in the Shoo Shoo discography that handle concrete meanings or messages with a clear, more polished approach towards lyricism, and that many may see some of the lyrics or moments on Girl with Basket of Fruit as pure nonsense or rambles with shock factor nothingness. But even here, I think these insane moments from Jamie embody the idea of how insane some of these moments in history are at large. Shushu's generalized view on many of the horrors committed throughout history can only be best embodied into a musical form in this exact manner. Absolutely hellish and adrenaline-filled rampage with no rhyme or reason at times. When the world was never given upfront answers for many of the evils committed throughout time, why should we have to get them from Jamie? Shushu doesn't necessarily owe us anything. And hey, this is at least how I'm soaking it all in. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. 
which I honestly don't care if I am because it further emphasizes what I think the album ends up accomplishing. Stepping away and looking at the album as this purposely inaccessible piece of sound ironically explains everything about the lows humanity can reach. It is clear to see that Shushu is a vessel to tell the stories that need to be told and need to be remembered, no matter how disturbing they are or how accessible the way the songs are presented, Mary Turner, Mary Turner being Exhibit A. It's this intensity in songwriting that makes anyone take a step back and do a deeper search into what's being spoken here. I rarely find myself curious to look up lyrics to songs, even in times where I can't understand what is actually being said. But here I was just so intrigued to have it all laid out in front of me and look up the full lyrics to these songs online. Girl with Basket of Fruit just did its job in getting me to stay curious beyond anything. Usually with an artist, I'll find myself comparing them to another group or act in regards to their sound, artwork, and overall aesthetic just to kind of build a picture in my mind better. But I've never experienced anything quite like Shushu before. I'll boil it down to an audio art style intended to shock and cause discomfort beyond the sounds alone. Now that you finished this video, go and check out my video on Bruce Springsteen's Darkest Album. And also go check out my deep dive on the Caretakers Everywhere at the End of Time project. It's a two and a half hour long video and I put so much into that damn thing. So go check it out. Thank you for coming by today. And until next time, much love. Your boy, Pat Jennington.